Louisiana's Raging Cajun basketball team badly needed a win in Sunbelt Conference play Saturday night at the Cajun Dome after a tough loss on Thursday to Arkansas State in their home conference opener. They got it in a big way with a 75-61 win over Little Rock's Trojans to even up their record at 1-1 one one in the conference. I'm Dan McDonald along with Eric Mouton and Eric, the Cajuns with that 14-point win. But I think that everybody's going to walk out of the Cajun Dome tonight buzzing about the performance of Jakeen and Gant. They saw one of the all-time great Raging Cajun performances. Uh, I was lucky enough to, to have season tickets when I was growing up in Blackham Coliseum and got Andrew Tony. Uh, got to see Andrew Tony play, and I know Bo Lamar, another legend. But they will be talking about this performance tonight for a long time around here. They talk about filling a line in the box score. That's a common terminology that you use for a player. Well, listen to this line for Jakeen and Gant. 15 of 21 from the field, 4 of 5 from three-point range, 11 of 11 from the free throw line, 11 rebounds, six of them on the offensive end, one assist, only one turnover in 37 minutes, two steals, and, of course, 45 points. The only two players that have ever scored that many in a game for Louisiana, those two legends you talked about, Bo Lamar and Andrew Toney. And he knew tonight uh, it was almost a must win for the Raging Cajuns. They had to come in here and defend home court after losing that game on Thursday. They had a couple of other guys step up. Their point guard was in foul trouble. And uh, they, they did enough on the defensive end also holding them to that score and winning the game tonight. Little Rock only scored the 61 points. Now, this was a Trojan team that had come into the night averaging 89 points a game over their previous three games. Their problem was that they were giving up 99 in those games and you can see a little bit why because the Cajuns sort of got it going offensively in the second half. Yeah they did they shot the ball a lot better in the first half 33 percent from the field second half 53 and from the three-point line 15 percent in the first half and 57 percent in the second half. Along with Gant only one other player in double figures Cedric Russell with 11 but that was a big 11 points and an important 11 points for Russell because he struggled from the field on Thursday against Arkansas State. He was 0 for 6 from the three-point arc. Tonight he hits three threes on his way to those 11 points. Also had four assists and only one turnover in 34 minutes. And a lot of those minutes he was having to play at the point because Marcus Stroman was saddled with foul trouble all night. He was saddled, had to sit a lot. Only he, he only played 11 minutes and picked up that offensive, questionable offensive foul in the second half early on. But Russell moves over to the point, plays 34 minutes, and like you said, finished with four assists and only one turnover. That's a great job for a D1 point guard. And the Cajuns could have folded up some after Stroman wasn't on the floor, after everything he did on Thursday night when he had a 25-point game, 21 of them in the second half. With him not having the big game that could have put them in some sticky situations but a lot of other people stepped up no doubt and, and you talk about the team defense but you also talk about the defensive rebound we talked a little bit about it in the beginning 19 offensive rebounds for Arkansas State on Thursday only seven offensive rebounds which a lot of times leads to second possessions and, and, and points for that team only seven offensive rebounds for Little Rock tonight we would be remiss if we didn't talk about Rajon Tucker for Little Rock the Trojans had the conference's leading score coming into the week, and he showed why tonight. If it hadn't been for Gant's performance, everybody would have left buzzing about him. 36 points from him, 11 out of 15 shots, five three-pointers, nine rebounds in the game in 37 minutes. Uh, he is a player to watch, and it's, the Cajuns are going to have to be ready for him again when they head up to play Little Rock on that Arkansas sweep at the first part of March. Absolutely. He's a quick, tough uh, strong guard, and he gets down there and he can finish, and he can also step out and hit threes, whether it's in transition or within the offense. That Little Rock was running tonight with a lot of high uh, possessions by their bigs, trying to get their guards either backdoor layups or three-pointers, but he was very, very impressive tonight, too. Huge win for the Cajuns. They even up their conference record at 1-1, one and one, and that is big considering the schedule that's coming up. Their next three games against a very good Georgia State team, the preseason pick to win the league, a very good Georgia Southern team on that same trip, and then two weeks they've got to go up to play a UL Monroe team that has really played well and beat this same Little Rock team just a couple of nights ago. And that's one of the toughest things to do is to go on the road and win conference games. You got to be tough. You got to be physical. You're basically in there with with your team and your coaches because a lot of these fans don't get to travel to those places. So it's you against the world. Cajuns win this one 75 to 61 behind the 45 of Jakeen and Gant and they even up their conference record at one and one and they go to 10 and five overall on the season.
Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Basketball, I'll be sitting down with Director of Men's Basketball Operations, Michael Murphy. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't reach the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves, a Fritos Chili Pie, Juicy Junior Burger, or Junior Wrap. Does all this comfort come at a price? Yes, it starts at 99 cents. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves. there is something for everyone here from moving image arts to nursing to petroleum engineering to education to uh, voice to photography to political science to anthropology to sociology I just I can't list the almost hundreds of opportunities that students have to find the perfect fit and the major that best represents what they would love to do. We have alternate certification programs, master's programs, doctoral programs in addition to hybrid and online classes so a student can definitely find his or her passion um, as far as what they want to do. Not only are we going to find the major that is the best fit for our students, but we're going to make sure they graduate. We have one of the highest graduation rates in the state, and among our student athletes, in fact, we have the highest in the Sun Belt Conference. Knowing that UL Lafayette has one of the top graduation rates in the state makes me feel much more secure in my decision to come here, and it makes me feel very excited and confident for my time after I leave campus. We have everything here to be able to make sure uh, that the students have the support they need as they go through the process. From a writing center that'll look over papers and proof freedom for you, uh, to free tutoring services that students can walk in on demand and say, physics is not my thing, um, can you please give me a little bit of help? Uh, we have prep classes for the GRE, we have prep classes for the LSAT. Uh, we look at medical school and pre-med and law school and business school. We have MBA programs. We have many, many PhD programs um, so that students can uh, further their education as they progress. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Basketball. I'm sitting down with Director of Men's Basketball Operations, Michael Murphy. How are you doing today? I'm great, how are you? I'm good. So first I want to talk with you about this past Thursday's game against Arkansas State. It was your guys' first game without Malik Marchetti since he tore his ACL. How did you guys prepare to make up for those lost points? Well, that's easier said than done. Uh, Malik is a great player. He had been shooting the ball very well from the three-point line, our most consistent shooter from the three-point line. So it was really next man up. We feel as though we have some depth at the guard position, and we knew we could get some production out of guys like P.J. Hardy, Cedric Russell, um, Jerikus Davis, who is capable from beyond the arc, and then also a guy by the name of Jakeen and Gant also has that ability from beyond the arc. But uh, we hate it for Malik. It was a devastating injury for him and for our basketball team, and we're going to do the best we can. But as the old saying goes, next man up. And here we go, we're in the conference play. We can't feel sorry for ourselves because nobody's going to feel sorry for us. So that next man up was P.J. Hardy because he did replace Malik in the starting lineup that game. So why did you choose him? Well, he had a great game against southeastern Louisiana. Uh, he made three threes, made a big three in the final minute of the game that allowed us to win the basketball game. So P.J. had earned that right with his production against southeastern. And I thought he did a good job against Arkansas State. Uh, having said that, uh, Marcus Stroman really came to the forefront in terms of scoring and had a career high of some 26 points and was really effective for us uh, getting the ball to the basket, getting to the free throw line, and providing us points. But P.J. started because of his performance against Southeastern. So let's go into Saturday's game against Little Rock. Trajan Wesley was chosen to start at point guard. What was the reason behind that? Well, it was a defensive matchup, and, and we wanted to uh, put put Marcus at the three because of defensive strategy. You know, uh, basketball games are all predicated on who's playing, your matchups, and who you do best against in terms of defense, not necessarily offense. And, and that's why we started Trajan. So Marcus Stroman fought out of the game early after coming off a great game on Thursday. He fouled out after only 11 minutes. How did that affect the bench? 
Well, that was a big deal, and fortunately, Coach Marlin had prepared us for that situation. We had uh, had Cedric Russell take some reps prior to the game on Saturday, on Friday in practice, and then Saturday during the morning practice at the point guard position. And this is something he hasn't done for about a year because we knew that by starting Trajan at the one, him being the backup to Marcus, may force us to play somebody else at that lead guard, point guard position. And it worked out because Cedric had to play the point when Trajan went down to an ankle injury, and then Marcus fouled out, and I thought Cedric did a great job running the point and getting us into our offense, which allowed us to have success at the end of the game. So midway through the first half, Trajan Wesley did limp out of the game and never came back into it. So what happened there? He sprained his ankle. It wasn't a big deal. It was a soft tissue injury. He'll be able to play uh, this week against Georgia State. But, but Trajan's a fireball. You know, he goes all out 100%. He's got one speed, and that's, that's fifth gear with the pedal to the metal. So when he went out, and Marcus having foul trouble, as you said, it, it forces to play Cedric. And, and, and that's the adjustment we made. We were prepared for that adjustment. I thought Coach Marlin did a great job. In, in, in having us ready for that situation. You know, that's all coaching right there. Having your players prepared for situations, we were, and we were able to uh, come away with a big win, having guys playing out of position a little bit. And Cedric's capable, don't get me wrong. He, he's a great talent, but it's something he hasn't had to do. He had to make the adjustment, and he did a great job at it. So Jaquin and Gant had an unbelievable night scoring. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, he did. Scoring 45 points. So what do you think made the difference that night? What do you think was the change within him? Uh, that's all coaching. We're going to take credit for all those 45 <laughs> points. No, Jaquin's skill set was on full display against Little Rock. And he's a guy that can score from all three levels, from behind the three-point arc, at the basket, and with the mid-range jump shot. He's also a very good free throw shooter. So Jaquin had one of those nights where all of his offensive skills were on display and, and we needed it to be sure uh, to beat a very good Little Rock team, especially with Marcus being out and Malik not being there. But he came through like a, like a senior would and he's capable. Now we can't count on that every night, but it was nice to see it on Saturday night. And he's in some great company now. I mean, you talk about, let, let, let's go back in the day with Bo Lamar, uh, Andrew Tony. Those guys were great players, and people are always going to remember where they were the night Jaquina went for 45 in the Dome, just like they were with Bo and, and, and uh, Andrew Tony. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Next on Inside Louisiana Basketball, Athletic Director Brian Maggard joins us for Maggard Minutes and Cedric Russell searches for the player with the best style. If you're happy and you know exactly code, if you're happy you know exactly code, if you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know exactly code, Sunbelt Basketball Championships, where spirit flows, our passion shows, our pride grows, where champions rise above, at Lakefront Arena in New Orleans, presented by First Bank and Trust, it's the Sunbelt Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. Contact your local ticket office today. Crunchy Fritos warm melty cheese all together for 99 cents. It's like a warm chili cheese Fritos family reunion. Yeah, I feel warm just thinking about it. That's the chili. I feel it too. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos chili cheese fave starting at 99 cents and try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. Happy New Year, Cajun Nation. This is Brian Maggard, Director of Athletics at the University of Louisiana. On behalf of our entire athletics department, I want to say thank you for your continued support uh, of our 16 sport programs and our 450 student athletes. Without your support, we could not accomplish all that we have thus far, but we also know that we have much more that we'd like to accomplish moving forward. This past fall semester, I saw a very successful first year for head coach Billy Napier, as he and his staff and program won the West Division Championship within the Sun Belt Conference and competed for a conference championship against Appalachian State in December. We also uh, accepted an invitation to and competed in the Otter Nation Cure Bowl uh, against Tulane University. 
And although we came up short of that game, I, I want to tell you that I'm extremely pleased with and excited for the future of our football program under Coach Napier's leadership. As you may be aware, uh, we signed the number one recruiting class in the Sun Belt Conference and had, top, had a top 10 recruiting class within the group of five uh, schools across the nation and a top 60 class overall nationally. Our men's and women's basketball programs are competing in the Sun Belt Conference right now in uh, conference play and uh, we're looking forward very much to the uh, progress that both teams can make uh, this season and get into tournament play and hopefully win a tournament championship to progress on to the NC2A uh, tournament. The spring semester is going to bring a lot of excitement as well. Uh, we know that uh, softball and baseball are right around the corner and we're expecting uh, many, many positives from both of those programs this year uh, as they compete for conference championships and national championships. Uh, men's and women's tennis, golf, and track uh, are right around the corner as well uh, for the spring uh, season as well. And so again, we're just looking forward to many, many positive highlights throughout all of our sport programs uh, this semester. Uh, for me personally, I know I'm going to be focusing on uh, the renovation of Cajun Field uh, and getting those plans identified and starting to move forward uh, on a fundraising campaign to, to get that project underway. Uh, in addition, uh, I want to take a look at a departmental-wide strategic plan uh, that will serve as a roadmap for our department in helping us get to where we want to go over the next one to three years. Each and everything that all of you do for our 450 plus student athletes in our 16 sport programs uh, is greatly appreciated. Please know that. Uh, I look forward to communicating with you regularly throughout this semester and uh, just appreciate all that everyone does for this amazing university and our athletics department. On behalf of our entire athletics department, go Cajuns. What's up, man? Uh, I'm Seti P. You know, today before practice, and we're gonna find out who got the best style and who got the worst. In your opinion, who you feel got the best swag and the worst swag? On the team? On the team. Uh, man, that's a hard one. Hold on, worst? <laughs> worst probably Trajan. <laughs> I don't know, that's a hard one now. Best style. But the worst, Jalen, though. I say worst is Jalen. <laughs> Why y'all do Jalen like that, man? Hey, who you feel got the, the, <laughs> the worst swag? <laughs> Probably Jalen. <laughs> All right, so Dre at the bottom, man. Who at the top, bro? Jalen. <laughs> the who? Jalen. You talking about the Jalen that played for UF? Oh, I got the best swag on the team. See what I'm saying, bro? Everybody put my guy at the bottom and look what he do. That's crazy. Why you think you got the best, bro? No, I keep it simple. Everything basic with me. If you catch me, I, I don't try too hard. I don't try too little either. Malik just said Taylor was the best, bro. He was being funny. <laughs> he was being funny. So, Coach, on the team, who you feel is the best dressed and who is the worst? Well, I'm obviously the best dressed. All right, we got Jalen at the bottom. We got Trey at the bottom. So, who at the top, bro? Me. Why? Yeah, then you. Why are you always putting yourself first? I'm going to have to go with my road dog for real. Who? Jeremy Hayes. I don't think nobody got the worst swag on the team. Everybody brings something different to the table. Everybody, somebody might have some shoes, somebody might got the jeans, somebody got the shirts, somebody got the hats, some people got the chains. Ain't nobody got, everybody got swag on the team. It is, man. It is. My boy sound like Coach Marlin, man. Everybody brings something to the team. I mean, I really don't care about swag. I feel like getting a bucket is, is swag, you feel me? So sure, You got swag on the court, huh? Already, bro. I don't care about them clothes or nothing. Yeah. The there you worst go. dressed would probably be, from a co color coordination, have to be P.J. Hardy. <laughs> Next on Inside Louisiana Basketball, women's head coach Gary Broadhead joins me to recap the week and looks forward to home conference play this week.
the Steakhouse Bacon Cheeseburger from Sonic. Crispy bacon, melty cheese, black pepper mayo, and grilled onions. No reservations required. The Steakhouse Burger and Tots for only $4.99. Get them now. UL Lafayette was the best fit for my daughter because we looked at many different schools. But when we walked on this campus and did our tour, we knew that this was the school for her because of the way everyone made her feel. We at the Office of First Year Experience spent a lot of time working to help students, the freshmen, and the parents with the transition from high school to college. And we want to make sure that parents and students have all the answers that they need to make sure that once they come here in August, they're prepared and ready for classes. The communication here from the university has been outstanding because we're constantly being contacted either via text or email from the Office of First Year Experience to really make that experience unmatched. UNIV 100 is a course where students really can take something that they're really excited about, but in the scope of that class, we have helping resources. So the UNIV 100 instructor and peer mentor are there to help those students individually through those challenging steps in that first semester. As we're transitioning them from a home to a new home. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Basketball. I'm sitting down with Louisiana head women's coach Gary Broadhead. How are you today? Doing great, doing great. Good. So I want to talk with you about the maturity of your team. You ha do have such a young team, so how do you guys compete when you play against teams that have more playing experience? Well, you know, it's, 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 I th to me it starts at practice. You know, we, you know, we try to prepare them in practice to go in, but you know, you, you got to go through the, the motions. You know, you got to go through the experiences of it. And so we just try to, we, we worry more about us and what we we need to do than what the other team does and I think in the process you know it's just a, a process that you have to go through you know you're going to struggle and those struggles are going to make you better and we try to utilize those struggles to to try to get their experience and to make them more confident you know I think that's a big thing about on the women's basketball side is the more confident they get more comfortable they get the better and the more productive they are yeah what do you think is the biggest change in this season versus last year's season well, you know, I think this season, you know, being young on the defensive side has been a little struggle. You know, we've been struggling a little bit making stops on the defensive side. And I think this is a process that, that you have to go through. You know, last year we had kids, uh, we had four seniors that had experience, had experience and stuff. And uh, so it's just uh, learning the system, I, I think, is a big part of when you're young. You know, we, we're being led by two sophomores right now, which is makes it kind of difficult when you don't have any seniors. But, uh, you know, they're doing a good job in trying to, pick up a lot of the slack that the seniors had last year. But last year's team, you know, we were very skilled in passing. I thought we moved the ball more fluently, but because we were more comfortable. So who do you think has had the most improvement this season from the start to where we are now? Uh, man, it's, it's really hard to tell because everyone has improved, you know, little by little. We haven't seen huge improvements. You know, freshmen are getting more comfortable. Uh, you know, you got Brandy Williams. You can see that she's getting more comfortable on both sides of the ball. Andrew Canoia is really getting more comfortable on the offensive side, you know, and you know, Ty Doucette and uh, Skylar Goodwins are the ones with the most experience, you know, and uh, you know, they, they've been really, really good some games and some games, they, you know, they, they haven't been. So I think that's what we need is some consistency from them. But, you know, I think everybody's improving. Uh, and I think the big thing for us is can we improve as a team, like as one unit, I think is going to be big for us. So what freshman players do you have now that you'll see being leaders when they get older, when they become juniors and seniors? I really think all of them, man. I, I really do, man. I love the freshmen. You know, uh, Coco Daniels is a, a redshirt freshman, uh, so she's got a little bit more experience being here since last December, but not playing other than practicing. But she's got a lot of energy. And I mean, she doesn't mind speaking her mind, and you know, they, you know, sometimes it takes that. But I, I can see Coco Daniels being a, a floor leader. You know, somebody that can really get the team together and start to play together. What has been the biggest challenge that you guys have faced this year? 
I think the biggest thing for us is on the defensive side is teaching these kids not only to get to help, but to actually help on the defensive side. You know, taking charges has been something that we've always done pretty good and we're not as good this year. Uh, I'm surprisingly that we're rebounding better than I thought that was going to be, uh, you know, something that we didn't do. And I, I know in the Arkansas trip just now, I mean, just this past weekend, we didn't rebound as well as we'd like, so it kind of showed back up. But, you know, I think those are the things that when you have a young team that they're not used to doing in high school, you know, and now it's a different game, it's a little bit faster. So uh, that, and then I think the biggest thing too is, uh, is turnovers. You know, we've been having quite a few turnovers. And so that makes our defense a little bit, uh, it's, it makes our defense struggle a little bit because of the four on threes and three on twos. But, uh, you know, we're getting better. I mean, we've come down from 20 to, to about 16 now, so it's getting better. So Kendall Bass had a career high in the game against Little Rock. What changes did you notice that she made in the game to get her there? She looked more comfortable. You know, K Kendall is a very, very good scorer. She can score in many different ways. And I think, you know, her not playing until December, it was, it's kind of like riding a bike. You know, you can ride it, but sometimes you try to ride it too fast. I think that's what she was doing. And when she first started to play in December, she was trying to play too fast. And I thought in a, uh, in a Little Rock game, I thought she slowed herself down and she was more patient. And she kind of let the game come to her, but she really looked good. And, you know, we're looking for some big things for her, from her. Yeah. So how big of an advantage is it having the next three games at home? Oh, it's big. It's big to play at home, you know. I know our, just our travel on... Uh, on the Wednesday of the little of, of Arkansas State game, we were in a bus for, I mean, we were actually in, on a, on a plane and a bus for almost 19 hours, and so that was tough, you know. I know that was, uh, you know, travel that nor not normal, but you know, it's always great to play at home. You get to sleep in your own bed. You get er up early in the morning. You get to do shoot around. You know, you got a fan base that comes. Uh, all those things are big, and that's one of the things that we're preaching to our youngsters. We got to take care of and protect our home and, and try to get wins here because uh, it to me it's a lot easier to get those wins at home yeah. well thanks coach appreciate you next on inside louisiana basketball we take a look at the upcoming schedules for raging cajuns basketball at the university of louisiana at lafayette our raging cajun spirit goes beyond athletics All this for the steakhouse bacon cheeseburger? The smoky black pepper mayo deserve at least the full steakhouse treatment. Very impressed. Someone just walked in, we only have one tablecloth. The steakhouse burger and tots for only $4.99. Get them now and try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. The 2019 Sunbelt Basketball Championships. Where spirit flows. Our passion shows. Our pride grows. Where champions rise above. At Lakefront Arena in New Orleans. Presented by First Bank and Trust. It's the Sunbelt Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. Contact your local ticket office today. Thank you for watching another episode of Inside Louisiana Basketball. I'll be leaving you with the Louisiana basketball schedules for the upcoming week.